Welcome to this, our inaugural episode of Art and About with Danny Haubin on BronxNet. In this series, we will be exploring and practicing the creation of landscapes, still lifes, portraits, and all kinds of subject matter using basic drawing techniques. In today's episode, we will be focusing on the 10 steps to the human face. Uh, I'm starting with a basic kit of brown of, or your basic sepia tone pastel, a white or ivory color pastel, and a black pastel. Another couple of materials that we are going to be using are a hard eraser, and these should be either a white or a clear eraser, a, a, a soft eraser called a kneaded eraser, a charcoal pencil, soft if possible, and in order to work with your charcoal pencil, which cannot be sharpened in a regular pencil sharpener, you'll need a sandpaper block or a piece of sandpaper and a razor blade, exacto knife, or any single edge blade. And we're going to use one more tool. Uh, the technical name for this is a tortillon, which is a blending stump. And we need a rag, cloth rag, paper towel, or whatever. OK, now we're going to begin with the 10 steps to the human face. And we're going to start with a border. This allows us room on all sides to expand if we need to. Step two is the creation of a mid-tone. The definition of a mid-tone is that it's halfway between the darkest mark you can make with the same pastel. If you press hard, you can see the difference of how dark you can make it. And the white of the paper. So if, if you call the darkest mark you make a 10, then the white of the paper is a 1. This mid-tone should be a 5. So we're going to, you see I just trace the side of the pastel over it a few times. Then I take my rag. This could be a cloth rag or a paper towel, whatever you have handy. And you want to just gently rub in your tone. And you'll see how uh, there's many advantages to starting your drawing with a tone. And we're going to do this whatever subject we're going to be working with is going to start with this mid-tone. And the way you know that your tone is not too dark or too light, uh, you know it's, it's not too dark if you can clearly see the, the same pastel when you press harder. You want to clearly see your line. And you know that it's not too light. If you erase it, you can clearly see the erased line. Now here you're going to witness one of the great benefits of starting with a tone is if you want to make changes, you just take your rag and rub it right back and, and start with a fresh surface. We've put in our border. We've put in our mid-tone. And now we're going to make the oval of the face. And we're going to, you know, use a good, the, the bulk of this space within the, the, the uh, square that we created. Now we need to give our uh, guidelines. And we start with the guideline for the eyes. And this. Uh, and we, we are creating a frontal face in this exercise, which means that uh, you're looking directly at the, at the, the subject, the face. Um, our first guideline is the, the center of the eyes. And it's going to be a little bit above the center of the oval. Now, some guidebooks say, some drawing uh, how to draw books show the, the eyes in the center with as much 
above as below. But if you look around, look at yourself in the mirror, look at anyone around you, you're going to notice that there's more of their face below the eyes than there is above. Now, you don't want to shortchange them and, and reduce their cranial capacity, but you want to make sure that there's more space below the guideline for the eyes than there is above, okay? And the next guideline is the nose, the bottom of the nose, and that's uh, just about halfway between the chin and the eyes. The next guideline is the mouth, which is about halfway between the chin and the bottom of the nose, okay? And now, because it's a frontal face, our one vertical guideline is right down the center. Next step is taking the side of our pastel and blocking out the dark areas of the face. Now, um, you want to leave enough space between these eyes. Uh, proportionally, there's about an eye's width between your eyes. So if you measure the, the length of your eye and you could put that space between your eyes. So you want to give enough space. Now you might ask, why is it dark when your eyeballs are sticking out? But uh, if you look at a skull, what you will see are two big holes in your skull and those are called your orbital sockets. The next dark area we're creating is the not only under the nose, where there's a shadow cast, uh, but the base of the nose. And the next dark area is your upper lip. Why the upper lip? Well, if you look at a profile, you'll see that your upper lip is beveled in. It's actually uh, sort of facing downward. Um, the next, the next dark area is under the lower lip because the lower lip sticks out and protrudes and casts a little bit of a shadow underneath. And then the final dark area is under your chin. So you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so now we can take your, if you want, you can take your rag and erase your, the excess guidelines that we don't need anymore because we've created this proportional relationship of darks and lights. And now we're going to use our eraser to pull out the lights. And um, the first, the lightest area of the face is your nose. Why? Because it sticks out the furthest. How do you know this? If you walk into a wall, the first thing that you're going to hit is your nose. So you can take either, if you, if you um, want to try using your soft kneaded eraser, uh, at this, this is the only real use for the kneaded eraser is, is when you're erasing the light tone that you've put on the paper. You don't want to use it later because uh, if there's too much pastel on the surface, it'll get all caked up. Um, and, these, and this is the first of what I call the five points of light. Um, the second point is the forehead, which does curve out along the contour of your skull. Uh, so you can start in a circular motion uh, at the center of your forehead, and then with, with less pressure, you can uh, do a centrif centrifugal uh, motion that can uh, sh begin to show the blending, that the lightest part of the forehead is in the center. Now, the, the uh, next point of light, I consider the two uh, cheekbones as, as one point of light. Now we have the lower lip, which as I say, um, protrudes out and catches the lights. And now finally, the final point of light is the chin. So we should have something that looks like this. We're going to start getting into the features themselves. And for that purpose, I'm going to illustrate the shapes of the actual features. The, the shape of it uh, is like a, a half moon 
on top and then it comes forward and then goes straight back and then curves down like this and within the shape you've created the eyeball itself what we call the the eyeball but the iris the the dark uh, colored part of your eye takes up a good chunk of that space within within the eye so this is the basic shape we're working with within that dark area we created for the eyes and there's normally uh, I shouldn't say normally but in most cases there's not one line above the uh, the eye uh, there's there are two. The first represents the edge of the eyelid that's reinforced with the eyelashes. And the second line represents the crease. So you're going to have something that looks like this. In the center of your uh, iris is the pupil, which is the darkest point in your face. So Let's, let's adopt this uh, to our dark and light areas. I'm going to use a black pastel to draw exactly what we just showed. Uh, and, and it's not the entire dark area, but it's a good amount of it. We're going to put two semicircles, two crescents, within this area. And, of course, try to make them uh, as close in size as, to each other as possible. And from the part closest to the nose, we're going to come in a little bit on both sides. And then go straight back and then come down. Uh, cur straight back and down. Straight back and down. So again, within this area, we're going to put the, the big circle, that's your iris, that has all the color in it. And it could be darker or lighter, that comes later, you know, according to the difference uh, from different people's eye color. And in the center, now the key with eyes is basically to have them looking in the same direction. That's always a good policy. Okay, now we're going to get to the shape of the nose. Okay. From the front, the nose looks like this. It comes down, goes up, comes down further, goes up, and comes down again. This is the nose from the front. So within, in the center of the area we created, we're going to put this shape. And you may, you know, pr want to practice this shape uh, a few times. Or, so just, you know, remember, it goes up, down further, up again. These are the sides of your nose. These are your nostrils. And so it, it's just basically something that looks like that. Okay, that brings us to the mouth. So here's your nose, the upper lip comes up in the center, then you have like a, a pretty uh, acute dip, and then it comes down like that. Between the lips, it's a more gradual line like that. And then below the lip, it's more gradual yet. It's just an indication of, well, actually, it's a little higher than that. You don't want to give them too big a lip. Um, so you see, with, if I don't have a tone, it's a pain to get rid of my lines, but it can be done with an eraser. Uh, and then uh, the chin is a, a broader uh, line yet. So you can see the significance of this um, vertical guideline that we used initially because the center of each of these dips, here I'll use a, a different color to illustrate this. Here's the dip, the dip, the dip. There's five times we see the same 
curve downward in different variations. The nose, the, up, the upper part of the upper lip, the line between the lips, the lower part of the lower lip, and the chin. So let's put that into practice. So here we have the nose, remembering that the upper lip is a little more acute, a little more uh, exaggerated, and then the line between the lips is more gradual, right? And then the line under the lips just emphasizes, it's just a, an accent to reinforce the dark and light, and then the chin. So you can see with these simple lines that, and understanding of the shapes, we, you could see the face beginning to unfold. So um, the shape of the face uh, is such that it goes in where the eyes are. So we're modifying the initial oval. You come in where the eyes are and then start to taper down. You're, you come out a little bit where the cheeks are. They, they are uh, rounded even on the sides. So we're going to come out a little bit where the cheeks are and then taper down. Maybe come out a little bit where the, where the uh, mouth is and then taper down to the, to the chin. So you should have something that looks like this. Uh, okay, now the one thing feature that's left is the ear. You want to know that the bottom of the ear is on line with the bottom of the nose and the top of the ear is on line with the center of the eyes and from the side the, the, the top part of the ear sticks out further than the bottom and then the neck actually connects from right behind the ear so you don't, what a normal thing that people do is put like a head up on a little pedestal. You don't want to do that. The head is connected to the neck plays such a uh, extraordinary role in supporting your head and connecting it to the body. So you got to give it its due. Uh, and now we can, now that we put in a neck, we can reinforce the shadow created by the jaw and the chin. So what's left? Well, eyebrows, uh, most people have eyebrows, the, the, and they vary tremendously, and they are running again along the dark, the upper part. So leave some space above the eyes, uh, and then put in the eyebrows, and they usually are thicker, closer to your nose, and then thin out as they go back. And we're going to do uh, what I call the secondary points of light. There's, uh, if one has no whiskers, uh, there's uh, often uh, you see a little bit of light running along the upper edge of the upper lip. And there's light that's catching on the, that uh, space between the two uh, lines that you, you created above the eyes. Now, as you notice, I'm having a little encumbrance with the eraser in this small area. Now you can use your white or ivory pastel. You can draw in these secondary bits of light. One other uh, common feature that's left is hair. And so there's an inner shape and an outer shape. What do I mean by that? The inner shape is the border between the hair, wherever, however it uh, sits, you know, wherever it overlaps your forehead. And there's an outer shape where it sticks out. We want to make sure that the, 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 the eye balls are definitely darker than the, than the, eye, the white around it. Okay, now we want to take a, if you have a completely different color uh, or t tone, uh, and just block out your uh, what I call the negative space or the space around your face. This, the purpose this serves is to make it easier to see what, which, 
you know, part of your drawing is the face itself, separate from the world around it. And now, actually, what we've created is the underpinnings of, of the face, the, 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 uh, the, the foundation. You know, now the fun begins, and which, what do I mean by that? Because we can uh, start to work with the subtleties, the modulations of tone. So uh, what we want to realize is that there's no f absolutely flat part of the face. It's all round, it's all getting lighter or darker. It's receding from the light source or it's expanding into the light source. And so that means that there's no place on the on your paper where uh, you're uh, leaving uh, the flat tone, the initial flat tone. I can take my light pastel and reinforce my lights uh, the, the more I do this, the, uh, you know, the uh, greater sense of 3D, three-dimensional uh, illusion. I mean, you know, and this brings us to, you know, the basic concept of what we're doing when we are, uh, you know, drawing anything. Uh, any subject, uh, except for completely abstract things, uh, is that we're trying to uh, create the illusion that there's more than two dimensions. Why do I say it's illusion? Because there's only two dimensions on a flat piece of paper, up and across, up and down and across. There's no depth, but by we use blending and we use um, the highlights and the accents to evoke a sense of dimensionality. So everything we've done thus far has uh, been the f creating a foundation upon which we can begin to elaborate and reinforce and bring to life. Now how do we do this? I've already mentioned uh, the, the highlights and accents, uh, the light and dark, strengthening light and dark. We can do it with color. So if I wanted to bring, you know, some, uh, a little, you know, now that because the, the tone we put on was so um, light, you know, it was just what we rubbed on. Uh, it's easy to add little bits of color to reinforce. So you can add some warmth. Uh, to the light areas and to the the blended areas and then we can add some maybe some cool tones if you understand the difference what's a cool tone blue violet you know what's a warm tone think of heat think of uh, red and uh, yellow those are your hot tones but if we add often in shadow there's there's a cool tone well, that's it for our 10 steps to the human face. What do you think about my picture face to face? Wow, so this is all looking good. Uh, what I would do is just blend the hair so you don't get that crumbly effect. And bring, remember the contour. So bring in, you know, bring in the shape. She looks a little like she just has a bad toothache or something. So you, <laughs> you might want to render those contours. Mm, chin, just mm, big, big chin. I mean, the proportions can change, but you know, you, as we do more of these, you'll, you'll intuitively get a feel for the relationship of the features. This is, you know, marvelous to see all of this. Remember, this dark traces right along the bottom of the neck. So it's right in there. And you know, you can soften, 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 you know, blending. There's no abrupt changes in the face. It's soft. It's the skin that's, 
you know, draping over the, the bones. So every, there's no place where light ends abruptly and then dark begins. So you can modify, and that's the fun part of what we're doing is to, uh, you know, is to see how subtly we can control these materials. You know, so we start very rough and crude, but then slowly we can, uh, you know, make it more subtle. This is a very nice mouth. You can get a feel for some individual quality, the chin. Uh, remember, dark under the nose as well. So, you know, just as we do this and as one of the wonderful things about this kind of uh, exercise is that we become much more in tune to, to people and to people's faces. You know, now suddenly we're not just looking at individual people and all the storylines or just like, you know, general uh, sense of, of folks, but what we're seeing are the proportions and how their expressions, what changes, you know, when you're looking at, uh, you know, at people expressing themselves. I encourage everyone to draw yourself in the mirror. You're always available, your neighbors, uh, you know, if you come across uh, beautiful reproductions in newspapers or magazines, just uh, try to try out this exercise on your own and tune in next time for Art and About with Danny Haubin on BronxNet.